Hello everyone, this is a tutorial for how to use GStreamer with OpenCV on the Jetson Nano and the Pi camera. I developed this tutorial as part of material that to go together with my new book which should be available in October 2021. And the topic we would like to cover are uh, review how to access a camera OpenCV on the RPI and on the Jetson Nano. And then we'll go into covering some of the uh, utilities for the Pi camera on the Jetson Nano and how to use those utility to create components uh, of an example GStreamer pipeline. So to open access Pi camera open CV, you have seen this one before if you've seen my first book. Usually uh, from uh, C programming point of view, you need to design, uh, you need to define a cam ID, usually zero, which point to slash day slash video zero or your first camera in uh, the OS back end. And then to actually capture the camera, you define a, a, a new video capture object I call bitcam. And all you do is just supply that cam ID to it, which is zero in this case. And once you get it, you can use it method uh, for setting the frame per second, the frame width, the frame height, and all of that. So, for example, if you use a Pi camera and you check with the Raspberry people documentation, uh, in particular, if you want 120 frame per second, 640 by 360, uh, possibly uh, the Linux OS talk to the camera and it may decide to put the camera in two possible modes, 1280 by 720, 40 to 90 frames per second, or 640 by 480, 400 up to about 200 frames per second, okay? So all that is done in the background, negotiated between the Linux OS and the camera itself, and we don't know what's going on there, really. And then, so when we do bitcam and capture into an image called SRC here, the actual capture image on uh, RPI 4B, I'm running 64-bit OBS uh, OS, which is a beta phase right now. The actual capture image is 640 by 360, but only 90 frames per second. So it looked like it using mode six here, and it chopped it out in quarter size, so that I can 640 by 360. So this is how you access a Pi camera in OpenCV framework, just plain OpenCV framework. You know, to access it into just a Nano though. Oh, they don't want all work to work. Actually, there's a very long string involved. And luckily, the good folks at Jetson Hack already figured out. So at this uh, website here, they provide everything, Python version, C version. And I use that version, but I converted to this approach of having uh, five uh, strings that I add together in order to use it. So now when you are using the GStreamer uh, device capture, so we say, you have to specify the pipeline, which is that long string. And that's the purpose of this tutorial to explain how to get this long string to be done. And then you feed that into as one, the first argument for the video capture object. Send comment is a constant CV cap GStreamer. And then luckily once you've done that, you access the camera to get out of the images and everything else is normal. And when you do this on the Jason, uh, Jason Nano 2 gigabyte, you actually can get 640 by 360 at 120 frames per second. So much better on Jason Nano. Okay. So like I said, Jason Nano people, hack people provided all this nice result and it works fine. But I just would like to understand how actually, how does it work better? So to dig in some more, and I found um, some solution, and I would like to share with you, uh, see how you like it. So I found out that I can use a, because it's a pipeline, so I was thinking of an analogy with the uh, uh, problem I have usually at home. And I have a lawn in the back, and now it's summer, so sometimes they need watering. And my hose babe is up in the front of the house, okay? So I have a sprinkler system here, a portable one. So somehow I have to get from the front of the house 
to the back of the house and of course we just use I have a three quarter inch hose I can hook up to and I have another half inch hose I can hook up to and then I have the sprinkler uh, unit here and where I can put out on my back lawn so we can hook this up we do it automatic we don't even think about it but you think about it there's some very important component the hose bit and all the hoses are standardized so the connection or the connector component here all standardized so you can hook up everything together into one pipeline okay so therefore you're going to have the thing out from mostly the house which is in the u.s probably one inch pipe the source it comes through three quarter inch hose half inch hose and finally get to the sprinkler unit itself the module itself we kind of split out into what about 10 little stream that swing around so the lawn is really the sink of all the water and the source is the one that coming from the house okay so everything comes from a source to a sink in a g stream or pipeline if you inspect with uh, GStreamer documentation, they usually do use this uh, flow chart. So each of these here is called an element. So we have source element, which is the IMX219 camera on the Jetson Nano or RPI. And then you have the swing sync of it, which is whatever OpenCV C++ code app that we were working on, which is a sync. So this is the app sync. That's different type of sync, like uh, you can have a display sync. You can sync as a file. It could, could be an image file. It could be a video file. Okay, so that's a different sync. The source is the camera. And then usually there are several elements in between to convert what the source data coming out to something that the sync can understand or use the app sync. So for now, okay, the app sync is OpenCV app. So that's in format that it's expect its image frame to be. This one, it also can spit out or transmit certain data frame that uh, it, it can be done. So the converter would turn out to be is we need two converter for this job and uh, any kind of in between. Now, once you have this kind of, shall we say, a model or uh, uh, model representation of the pipeline, you notice something very important and become one of the key to remember when you start designing, let's say, your own pipeline for different uh, needs or something beside this uh, application. So the thing in between here is you, this kind of logically, you can see logically determines whatever that source data format it gives out. It better be in a data format that the sync part of the converter one understands. And once it pick up that data, it can understand the converter element itself can you know do into some internal changes, and then it put out to a source to transmit it out. You can see the data here format is changed, different from when it was over here. The same token converter two, the sync part of it better understand the data coming out from the source of converter one. In the same way. The source of converter to better send out data that the app sync can understand. So when you look at this one here, is it kind of redundant to repeat the data format for the sync of converter one because it's the same thing as the source uh, data frame data format. Also, in the same way, it kind of you don't need to specify the data format of the sync of a converter two uh, because it's the same thing as the data format for the source part of a converter one. So you see when we actually apply it, uh, this part here somehow is not specified. But however, if you are designing the pipeline, you better check it. Although you don't have to specify it, you better check that it is supported properly. All right, so let's go on. So a little bit more precise. So we're dealing with color frame, color image frame that we need in our application. So on the one end, we're using OpenCV, so it won't it image, uh, color image frame format in the BGR format. On the other end, the camera is NVMM or NV, uh, probably multimedia format of some sort on the uh, Jetson Nano itself, for the camera Jetson Nano. So we have to go from NVMM to BGR somehow. 
Okay. So, so this is, shall we say, the flow diagram or flow chart of the pipeline that we would like to create. To realize it into a C code that your uh, OpenCV code can understand and, and, and uh, Linux Tegra can, can set on its hardware, it actually you have to figure out a bunch of little strings connect together with that exclamation character all the way. Okay. And it boils down to is for each of the elements, so it's element one, shall we say element two, element three, element four of the pipeline. For each element, you have to define what that process is and what are the capability of that process. So for example, what is a source camera? Okay. And that what is the capability of that source camera? Next it converter one or process A. Now what is process A? What is the process A capability? And then process B, what are process B capability? And then AppSync, what are the AppSync you use? And what are the AppSync capabilities? Okay. So four elements, eight little strings that we need to specify. In order to do that, uh, that two utilities very useful in Linux Tegra and also in our Pi. Uh, if you use a 32-bit OS, you can use it too. Called, one is called GSD Launch 1.0. And if you dig in further, you find out that the camera source or the plugin or the tool that represents the camera on the Linux Tegra is named NV Argus Camera SRC. So that, that's the one that represents this source element here. So when you GSD launch it, it what actually it does is display the image captured. It also split, uh, uh, display lots of information. I'm just capturing some of the information of, of use here. So there's a one group of data called available sensor mode. And you can see that the different sensor mode here, that, like this one is 4K essentially frame rate, 21 frame per second and so on. And then they, after they display that, it says, oh, I'm running with the following settings. Camera index is zero and camera mode is two. Okay. So camera mode is zero is great. Oh, that's pointed slash day live video zero. Camera mode two and it, and then it's further printed out. It's 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. So therefore camera mode two must be this mode. And then we can figure out that, oh yeah, this guy, camera zero, that camera uh, mode one, uh, mode three here, mode four, and this guy must be camera mode five, which is 1.1280 by 70 at 100 frames per second. This one is most interested, uh, most interesting to me. That's what we are going to use. All right. So that's GSD launch. But GSD launch doesn't tell us much about the capability of NVIDIA Argus camera. SRC. We need to know what it's capable of also. In order to do that, you use a utility called GSD Inspect 1.0. So when you do GSD Inspect on, on the command line, NV Argus Camera SRC, it, again, it displays lots of information coming out. The thing you look for, uh, look for the path template. And it will say SRC template. And right below it has capabilities. So you can see basically say, oh yeah, memory, NVMM, width and height, obviously that's a frame dimension. The format is string NV12 and another string. So NV12, when I check on it, it's some kind of uh, internal NVIDIA format, a 12-bit uh, color per color channel. So that, oh, that's pretty good there. And the frame rate is, you know, you can go very high, one up to, oh, <laughs> billions of <laughs> frames per second here. All right. And then if you scroll down further, there's something called the element property. Oh, they are particular use for us. Like sensor ID, it says set the ID camera to you by default zero. So if you have only one camera, you don't even have to worry about sensor ID because it will pick it up fine. But if you have more than two camera, you have to remember to set it to one or zero depending on your needs. Okay. And also there is a sensor mode. 
Send some notice. Oh, set the send remote to you by default minus one, which is it will know how to select the best match. So you only have to do is just specify the image frame you want. Uh, Linux Tegra will take care of setting the sensor mode for you if that's good enough for you. If not, if you want to be more precise and then you have to go here. Like for example, I need to specify that I want mode 5. Okay. So 80 or 70 and 120 frame. Okay. All right. So that kind of explain why the small piece that I call the peep line string one and string two here is I had to specify that this, this is the source name. Maybe I'll guess camera SRC. I want to make sure I use the first camera available uh, or, or Linux in the in back OS. Sensor ID is set to zero. And please notice I had a blank here because eventually later I had to kind of uh, concatenate all these little string together. And then this is the part that set up the capability of the source here. You can see that it it just repeat this plus the string and the width and the height and the, height and the frame rate. So you see video extra and VMM 1280 by 720 and V12 format. The frame rate is 120 over one, uh, 120 a frame per second. Okay, so that explains how to set that up. Again, you notice all the little blank space I need to do in the string just to be to be careful. The next thing here is we we just did this source element, so now we need to specify or understand the converter one element, the next one. So when you do GSD inspect NV bit convert, so this is another element name. Of course, okay, NV, so therefore this is one that is made by NVIDIA people. In there, it's display a lot of information again, but you need to go in to be used to scan, go in and scan for the scene template. And then down there, or among the capabilities, you go in and look, and it has lots of format. But the thing I was looking for, I want to make sure it has string NV12, because it means that this thing here can accept the data format that came in from the source previously. Okay, so all of this here is just checking to make sure that it can handle the sync capability can handle uh, the data that it gonna receive. The key thing we have to to uh, to set is the SRC template, and among its capability, I scan in and I was looking for BGR because OpenCV need BGR. But couldn't find any BGR, but it does have BGR X. So that's the best we can do, so that's what we'll do. And then you scan down further, you have element properties. And the most useful is that flip method. Flip method is sometimes, like for me, sometimes I mount the camera, shall we say, uh, right side up or the proper uh, orientation. Sometimes I would flip it, or uh, to be exact, I rotate 180 gram. So for my use, or most people use, we probably either uh, default use a default setting, or we use the method two, or rotate 180 degrees. So the element property here is useful. So for enemy bit convert, we know what to set up now. So the second, the converter two element, shall we say, now is specified as enemy bit convert. I need to use flip method two, and then this part here corresponding to the source. That means how it kind of the data could come out from video converter one. So again, video extra. I want six forty by three sixty out of that one, and because I didn't say anything about the frame per second, it's gonna keep the same uh, one hundred and twenty frame per second that it received in there before. Then the new format ABGRX. And again, notice there's a blank space, a blank uh, space there. Okay, so we're there. There's another, and then I found out there's another converter number two that we can use it's called video convert. Same thing, if you do GSD inspect on it and you go down, look for the sync, and then look in there and find a capability and say, oh yeah, it had BGR action there. So bingo, well, well good. And among the source, Capability, I scan in and there's a bunch of string format. Uh, and then I wound up and went, oh, 
that has string BGR. Great. This is what the OpenCV format. This is what my code uh, required to be. So I say, okay. So therefore, we're good. So, and then I look at the, go down further among the element property, and there's a bunch of things like I listed here, but none of it is, what it is, it's used, we don't know. Well, no, there, there are lots of things. There are lots of things uh, in these uh, converter that people made. Some of the time we just do robotics, so we we stay with a very small set of capabilities. So, so nothing useful there. So therefore, for the converter two, the way to specify it just give it name this time, just video convert, and then the output format. Remember it by this time here is six forty by three sixty at one hundred twenty frames per second, and we keep the same, so we don't have to to redo it again. But we change the format to BGR now. Okay, so that's all you do. Get uh, a blank space there. And then finally, we have to the app sync because we already got to the BGR format that our uh, C code required for the OpenCV code. So if you look, you do GSD inspect on the app sync, you go down the sync. Capability, it actually have any. I mean, hey, no problem. It can handle anything because at that time, it's like that. And I scan down for the element name and have tons of other things too, which is of no use to us at this point. Okay. So therefore, for the last element four, all you need to specify is exclamation point app sync. You don't have to specify anything else. And then you can see then, therefore, the pipeline string is just concatenation of these five lines. And when you apply that, uh, in short, in a way it is, is the camera is uh, transmitted 1280 by 720, 120 frames per second in NV12 format. The first converter rotate that image by 180 degree, scale it down to exact, to bend it down to a, so that only about a quarter of it, uh, number of pixels coming out, a quarter scale, so we scale it down. And also it transformed from NV12 to BGRX format. And then the second converter element, all it does is take this result here and just convert to BGR data format. So at the end, we got, so at the beginning, we had 1280 by 720, 120 frames per second, NV12 format. At the end of the pipeline, I have 640 by 360, 120 frames per second, BGR format. And that kind of fit into the object with cam that I usually use with my OSINT speed code. And that's it. So hopefully this presentation give you an idea of how to use the GStreamer and how to design if you happen to be needing some other utility or other transformation than the one I use here. In the book, that's all we need really, okay? All right. Uh, if you are more need more, require more information, I found that these two video there, each of them is like an hour and a half. They are much more hands-on and more detail on the G-Streamer, Adamans, and all of that very nicely. If you're into actually print books, and then these are also printed in 2018, and they're available uh, on Amazon. You can order them. They're pretty decent price, you know, like between 10 and $15 a piece. Or if you want to, you can go to this web link. And it has these two same two informations, the same two ma tutorial manual, but on uh, online. 